For over 75 years, Gector Brothers has been FEM's source for the exciting lineup of quality vehicles from Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. That's 75 years of making friends and servicing our loyal customers. And we look forward to the next 75 years of being FEM's source for Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. And uh, they even had a cake for Hart's assistant coach, Mike Walker, who tomorrow has a milestone birthday. So our good friend, Michael... 5-0. Oh. I wondered if we were just going to be real vague about things and say milestone victory or, or milestone birthday or if we were going to actually let the cat out of the bag. I guess uh, I know now. We are duty bound to report these things. <laughs> so happy birthday to Michael. We had a nice cake at the office today. And uh, he's a fine fella. Good to have him on our team and helping coach this Effingham team. So that's uh, how this shaped up. Now, what else can I tell you? I can tell you a lot. I want to give a shout-out to the Kerners and to Mark Mayhood and everybody at the St. Anthony Booster Club and the Effingham Sports Backers because the Carl P. Kerner Jr. Memorial Golf Tournament was yesterday at Effingham Country Club. Both schools' booster clubs received checks from Kerners for $25,000 and cash donations from the winners that total about $26,000 for each booster club. That is remarkable. Paul Kerner, Scott Cava, Sam Wagner, Jim Palkovic, and Tom Henderson were the gross division winners. They went 19 under. Wow. And the net division winners were Kevin Dust, Kevin Beal, David Lustig, Matt Wortman, Matt Wortman, pardon me, and Jeff Blunker. So thanks to everybody who played and all the whole sponsors. We're getting close to half a million dollars that that tournament has raised for the Booster Club and the sports back. Yeah, and around here, that kind of money can go a really long way for a school. So that's, uh, that's outstanding work that they're doing. So thanks to the Kerners and thanks to everybody else who had a part in uh, putting that together. That's pretty cool. Next week, we hit the road again. They want us to get too used to being home. We're headed down to Salem next Friday night for more Apollo Conference action. Then we're back home, and it's homecoming. So two weeks from tonight, it's homecoming as we play host of the Paris Tigers. And then we get to be home again. Uh, no, we go to Mattoon the next week. I was going to say. And then we're home to Mount Zion and to Muhammad Seymour. That'll be Mattoon's homecoming game that we'll be at, too. Good. That's good. Well, we'll just have a dandy time. That's our plan. So I, uh, I'll miss out on Effingham's homecoming game, but uh, we'll get to see Mattoon. So I'll see somebody's homecoming. Well, I'm, I'm glad. You and Chipper have a great time that week. <laughs> yeah, we're going we're gonna to have a good time down there. There you go. All righty. We are just about ready for kickoff. You're listening to all this on 97.9 XFM, WXEF in Effingham. It's a very busy local sports schedule, a lot of baseball, boys golf, the Big Mount Zion Invitational is going on. They might be done now. Uh, co-ed golf, there's volleyball, Effingham's up at the Mount Pulaski Tournament. I talked to one of the girls, she said, yeah, we play all Friday night, and then we play all day Saturday. So, best of success to them and their freshman and junior high action today as well, and then a full slate of activities on Saturday. A reminder that we are going to have plenty of sports on the radio this weekend. After this, we have three races on KJ Country, 2 o'clock tomorrow, 7 o'clock tomorrow night, and noon on Sunday. And then the Rams will be here on 97.9 with Washington on Sunday afternoon. So it promises to be a honey of a weekend. Two football games and three races for you. We're going to keep you busy here on your home for sports from Premier Broadcasting. Kick by Charleston High and taken outside the 10 and coming this way and turning it up, Logan Howell, and he has it out across to midfield before they ran him out of bounds. There's a good start for Effingham. Nice effort as Logan Howell came to the near side and ran it to almost midfield before they ran him out of bounds. They're going to mark the football at Effingham's 48-yard line. So great field position, Dustin, to get this thing started. Yeah, about a 35-yard return for Logan. He took that right around the 13-yard line. So uh, great field position to get things started. Let's see if we can turn that into points on the board and an early lead. Boy, you'd love to get, get on the board first. Nathan Bale going to work from the shotgun here on first and 10. Send Zach Miller in motion. He gets the handoff. He's going to the far side. That sweep as he turns it up lets him get across into Charleston territory to the 49 of the Trojans. A gain of three. It'll be second and seven. 
So a short gain, but a gain. And you're just looking for some momentum here in the first few minutes of the game. Three or four yards of play, you'll get it done. Keep those chains moving. It doesn't have to be uh, doesn't have to be home runs every time. Just make sure that they don't get the football. Here's the snap. Vail going to keep it that time. And he might have got back to midfield. He's getting peeled off from the bottom there. Hart's tried to get some help over there. Jeff Coleman tried to get him a block and actually turns out to be a two-yard loss. So from their 49 to our 49, a loss of two, and that'll make it third and nine. It'll be third and nine. And now you are looking for that home run play. Exactly so. Now third and nine, and let's see what happens here. Stan in. No, he's coming up under center here. Vale is on third and nine. From the Hearts 49, Miller in motion. Miller gets the handoff, and he has dropped, and not much there. He might have got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard, and... Uh, Maybe he got back to the previous line of scrimmage. Nope, right at midfield. Gain of one. So it's fourth and eight. So a three and out. Not what I was hoping for. But a good punt here. Could still uh, help you win a little bit of a field position battle. So we'll see what Zach Miller's got for us. Miller, the kicker, punter, extra point man. If it has something to do with a foot, he's your man. Good snap. Takes his time, gets it away, pooch kick, high, not as deep as he'd hoped, I don't think. It goes out. Well, they play the angle. It's not going to be very much. It's going to be inside the 35-yard line, so Zach wasn't able to angle it quite as much as he would have wanted to. He only a 16-yard net on that punt as they spotted at the 34, so... Charleston's uh, field position not uh, not too bad. Out from the midfield stripe to the 34, 16-yard punt, first and 10 here for the Trojans. Just underway at Klosterman Field, home opener, conference opener. Up under center, Sean Hussey, great quarterback. Hand off up the gut, and the heart stuff it. Might have got a yard or two. Nothing fancy here with Charleston. Just smash mouth football, Noah Miller. One of the ball carriers, he, Josh Casley, Hussey once in a while will be carrying the football. Levi Michael on the stop for the Hearts. Give Noah Miller one. It'll be second and nine. He's at his 35-yard line. Hussey stays up under center on second and nine. Snappy looking to throw, going to the far side. Got a man there. It's knocked away. Great defense out there by Marcus Robinson. Got a hand on that and swatted that away. That would have been a touchdown, Dustin. Yeah, there was nobody between the receiver and the goal line, but uh, Robinson got a hand in there, tipped the pass, and uh, gives us a third and nine. That's just great one-on-one -on -one coverage. Heck of an effort by Marcus Robinson because he had to in actually reach in and just managed to knock that ball away. So that stops clock with 9.29 to go in the first quarter. Brings up a third and nine for the Trojans at their 35-yard line. Just underway here at Klosterman Field. Hussey gets the snap. Going to throw. Coming to the near side. Throws through the middle. It's caught. First down and then some. It is caught. Good for a first down inside the Hart's 45-yard line. Dirk Levitt came over and made the stop after the catch out there for the Trojans by number 21, Treston Winnick. We'll see him a lot. He caught like 150 yards and passes last week. A little roll out to the right there for Hussey. He'll uh, throw on the run, right on the money. 21-yard completion to Effingham's 44-yard line. So they got it when they needed it. New set of downs, first and 10 at Effingham's 44-yard line. Hussey with a pitch. That's Casley up the middle. He's loose. Somebody better catch him. And he got tripped up. And a saving touchdown, a touchdown saving tackle. Cody Sennett. Otherwise, he was gone. Cody Sennett in the middle reached up, tripped him up, and he lost his footing. Otherwise, he was gone. So from the 44 to the 21, a gain of 23 yards and another first down for the Trojans. So after a couple of tough plays for Charleston, we're kind of seeing what uh, what they're all about here. They've got some big play capability in that offense. They are rolling on their first possession. Hussey looking to throw. Throws it out in the flats. It's complete out there to Noah Miller. And then he gets inside the 20, inside the 15, close to the 10, before he is taken out of bounds. 
Art to have Levi Michael over there, and also Carter Hayes, Marcus Robinson, all in that group. Call at the 12-yard line. 12-yard line from the 21 to the 12 again at the 9. So it's second and one. So Charleston marching down the field here on their first possession tonight. Sean Hussey up under center. Hearts jump, I think. We'll see whether they were drawn offside. Yeah, we got to hope for a false start here. Otherwise, they're going to give Charleston uh, first down by penalty. Yep, and it would be goal to go. And... And it is on the hearts, and it is a five-yard walk-off, and that'll move it from the 11 to the 6. A five-yard walk-off and a first and goal situation. Call it the 7, Dustin. I said the 6, the 7-yard line. First and goal here. Hussey lines up the Trojans. There's the handoff, goes to the deep back. That's Kasley, and he's in for the touchdown. Nice little cut. There is a flag after the score, though, I think. There is a flag, but I think it comes after the score. If that touchdown stands, that's going to be 10 on the season already for Josh Kasley. He is a deft little runner. They're talking it over, and looks like it's on Charleston. Face mask. No, it's on the hearts. Thought they talked to the hearts first, but must have just let them know what they did. So obviously Charleston will decline that penalty. Or, regardless, oh, it's a personal foul. On the defense, 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. All right, there you go. So it's a personal foul. So that'll be assessed on the kickoff, which means the hearts will be pinned back even farther, potentially. They're going to kick here. Good snap, placement, kick is up, kick is good. Charleston has a 7-0 lead. 8.36 to go in the first quarter here at Klosterman Field. 8.36 to go in the first quarter. Back with more in a minute on 97.9 XFM. For over 75 years, Gector Brothers has been FNM's source for the exciting lineup of quality vehicles from Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. That 75 years of making friends and servicing our loyal customers. And we look forward to the next 75 years of being FNM's source for Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Well, after Effingham a three and out, Charleston marched it down the field. A nice drive. Six plays, 66 yards, took a minute 28. Highlighted by the seven-yard touchdown run by Josh Casley. The kick was good by Nick Wilson. And Charleston has a 7-0 lead. The score comes with 8.36 to go in the first quarter. And the kickoff, because of that 15-yard walk-off for the personal foul, allowed Wilson to put it in the end zone, so it's a touchback, and the Hearts will get it first and 10 at their 20-yard line. Not just in the end zone, through the back of the end zone, so Hearts will have an 80-yard field in front of them if they want to even up the score here. And they might as well. I say, why not? 7 nothing, Charleston. Back to the shotgun, Nathan Bale hands it off, and picking his way through there is Logan Howell in a little bit of a gain. Just trying to find his way through there. We'll see if the Hearts try that sweep some more. Call it the 22. Second and eight at the 22-yard line. So a two-yard gain for Logan Howell. Young man who had over 150 yards against Centralia Saturday, as did Caden Vaughn. High snap. Bale gets it, looking. Balls out. It balls loose. Charleston says they have it, and they are right. Bale had it. It was a busted play anyway. Nathan was trying to make something out of nothing. Lost the football. Charleston recovers it at the 21. So, actually, as it turns out, there is one yard loss for Bale, and it'll be first and 10 for Charleston at Effingham's 21-yard line. Uh, not the way we were hoping this one would get started, Dustin. Yeah, it's a little bit of an inauspicious start here. Hussey up under center. There's a handoff to the back. That's Noah Miller. He gets a couple. Just running it up the middle. Nothing fancy here. Noah Miller on the run. A couple of people in on the stop. Bill Art helps in there on the tackle. 
He is assisted by Carter Hayes. Call it the 17. Hmm. 17 yard line. From the 21 to the 17, a gain of four. It'll be second and six. Charleston gets the ball in great field position after recovering the fumble. They started this drive at their 20 at the Hearts 21. Already leading 7-0. From the shotgun here, Hussey looks to throw. Hearts are after him. He looks to scramble. He throws to the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown. What a grab in the end zone. That pass was complete. Holy cow. What a catch in the back of the end zone. And Austin Cohn, who's one of the receivers that we hear a lot about for this Charleston ball club. And what a nice effort by Hussey, Dustin, to stay loose and get that throwaway. Cole Moran had him on the run, but he got the throwaway, and it's caught by Cole Cohn for a 17-yard touchdown completion. And it's 13 to nothing, and they're going to kick, and the Hearts got a hand on that one, I believe. Marcus Robinson or Dirk Levitt, I think, might have got a hand on that. But they did get it good. Oh, holy cow. They called that good. I thought... I thought that the Hearts got a hand on it. All righty. Wow. It's already 14-0 Charleston. They scored, and then they got the ball after an Effingham fumble at the Hearts 21, and they took it in, and they have scored twice already. And the kick was remarkable that that ended up being good. Logan Howell takes the kickoff for the Hearts at about the 20, and that's where he'll be taking down another flag. Well, I tell you, we have seen more flags in the early part of this season. It has been a big problem for the Hearts. Uh, you know, they cleaned things up a little bit in the second half of yesterday's game, but overall through three games, there has just been, there's been just too many penalties against Effingham. There's no other way to put it, and this one is too. It's a hold. The flag is at about the 19. Holding. On the return, 10-yard penalty. First down. Well, let me double check on that. No, it was outside the 20. So the 10-yard walk-off, and the football's back at the 10. So the flag was thrown at the 20. The hold happened at the 20. 10-yard walk-off on the hold. And now, all of a sudden, Charleston has the ball. Or the Hearts have the ball back at their 10. So first and... Let's see what happens. They got Miller in motion. They hand it off. Miller's loose. He gets to the far side. He's got a nice run going. He is out to the 30-yard line before they take him down. There's another flag. Nice run by Zach Miller. It's on the same side of the field where he was. That doesn't make you feel particularly good if you're a Hearts fan. No, it's a 15-yard gain if it stands. But it was a on the so six men on the line of scrimmage, and a five-yard walk off from the 10 back to the five. So now it's first and 15 for the Hearts at their five-yard line. Already down 14 to nothing. Yeah, and you're backed up against your old goal line. You can't uh, you can't take any plays for losses here. You got to at least uh, turn forward a little bit and. See what you can do. It's a tough situation right now. Nathan Vale will move up under center here. First and 15 at the Hearts 5. Miller's in motion. They're after him already. He gives it up the middle instead. And Caden Vaughn gets the ball. And he gets it out close to the 10-yard line. Call it the 9. So from the 5 to the 9, Caden gets 4 yards. That'll make it 2nd and 11. At least give yourself a little breathing room. Get that goal line a little bit further behind you. Hearts run Drew Levin in. He's wide to the far side of the field. Josh Casley keeping an eye on him. Vail fakes. Hands off. Ball's out near the 15-yard line. Pretty good run. Logan Howell carried. And the football out to the... 15-yard line. So from the 9 to the 15, again a 6. And that'll bring up a third and about 5. You really would like to get those chains moving here. You got to get that first down, hold the possession together a little bit here. Vail up under center on third and 5 from the Hearts 15. Miller in motion. 
They give it to Miller to the outside. No hold this time. He's out across the 25, and the Hearts have a first down. So nice work for Effingham. Started after the two penalties from their five-yard line, and they get the ball out to about the 25-yard line. Call it the 24 officially. So from the 15 to the 24, gain of nine, and a first down for the Hearts. Might be the same play that worked on the first down that got called back uh, due to that illegal procedure penalty. So the Hearts with a new set of downs, and Nathan Vale up under center, man in motion. Vale hands off up the middle. Nice run going out across the 30-yard line before they drive Caden Vaughn back. Caden worked that play really well against Centralia last weekend. On the stop for the Trojans. That was a nice play in the Hearts arsenal last week as they sent people in motion and then just ran Caden up the middle. Call it the 33. So from the 24 to the 33, a gain of nine. And it's second and one. Might be where you see the Hearts throw the ball for the first time tonight. Second and one. You might just put it up. Miller in motion. Up the middle, I think. Uh, the ball's, the ball's again. loose again, and I think Charleston's got it back. Wow. Charleston football. Wow. Up the middle. And I'm not sure that it was Vaughn that had the football. Ball came Great loose. For the recovery. Charleston recovers the it at the 38. So from the 33 the to the 38, a gain of five on the play for Vaughn. And then the fumble. And Charleston has it back first and ten. Two giveaways now for Effingham's offense. And Charleston's knocking on the door again, already leading 14 nothing. 4.51 left in the first quarter. Hussey's going to throw. He overthrows his man, I think. No, he didn't. Caught. Touchdown, Charleston. Touchdown, Charleston. Trust and win it. Right in the corner of the end zone. That was really pretty. Sean Hussey to trust and win it. 38-yard pass play for touchdown. It's already 20 to nothing, Charleston. We still have 444 to go in the first quarter, and it's already 20 to nothing, Trojans. The uh, Trojans are legit, Greg. They're living up to everything that we've heard about them coming into this matchup. So that score comes again with 444 to go in the first quarter. Let's see about the extra point try here. Good snap placement. Kick is up, and it's plenty high. And it's no good. He hooked it to the left. The point after is no good. Why so that's the only thing Charleston hasn't league. done right. 4-4-4 four, four, four to go. First quarter. It's already Charleston 20. Effingham nothing. Kick off on the way in a minute here on 97.9 XFM. One play, 38 yards, seven-second offense there. Treston Winnick caught the 38-yard touchdown pass from Sean Hussey, and it's already 20 to nothing, Charleston, as the kick for one was, was no good. This kickoff Carter ends Hayes up out across the, the 20. The Hearts will take over. Carter Hayes covered it up, old yeah, number 88 for line. Effingham. The Hearts will get a first and 10 at the 22-yard line. Well, we've said it all season, Hearts have stopped the bleeding. They can't, and, and I'll admit... The defense has been put in a bad spot in two of these drives. Yeah, you can't give a team that's as talented as Charleston the football in your territory. I mean, you just can't fumble the ball away on your own side of the 50 two times in the first quarter. You're putting yourself behind the eight ball before the game's hardly even gotten started. Beautiful sky. Not a beautiful score, though. Charleston leads it 20 to nothing. We still have 444 to go in the first quarter. Let's see what happens here for the Hearts. Hearts still running people in. And do we get it off? I don't think we did get the playoff. Nope, play clock expired, or the Hearts called time just before it did. So the Hearts called time. Otherwise, they were going to get called for delay of game. 4.44, as we said. Back in 30, Brian. It's 20 to nothing. Charleston leading Effingham here on 97.9 XFM. That's a reason for me to mention that Wayne's up top getting all the details and recording all the footage of this game, which you'll be able to see online later in the weekend. And Gary Stanfield from Riviera Records is down taking photos, and I'm telling you, you'll see a lot of that on the website over the weekend, so be sure to check that out. Okay, let's see what happens here. First and 10 for the Hearts of their 22. Handoff, and uh, not much. Caden Vaughn up the middle. Hearts ran Vaughn up the middle. Caden gets it to close to the 25. <laughs> They'll score it at the, the for the Trojans was Noah Miller. 24, 23, 23, gain of one. Didn't even give him as much as I thought he might have gotten there. Second and gain nine. of one, so second and nine for the Hearts. Bale working up under center on this series. Now he pops up, checks the sidelines, 
and re-racks the offense. There's the snap. He's going to throw. He runs to the far side and gets close to a first down. First time I've seen Nathan carry the ball tonight. Got it out across the 30, and that's very close to Hart's first down. He may have come up just a yard or two short. It just kind of depends on where they spot it. Yeah, they're going to mark it about a yard short, it appears. 31, excuse me, 23 to the 31, a gain of eight. Third and one. So third and one here. <coughs> excuse me, Hart's need to hang on to the football. Working from the eye. The deep backs got it, and they got the first down, and then Simon Logan Howell is loose, and he's out near midfield before they take him down. First down, Effingham. Good blocking that time. Logan Howell found the holes, picked his way through the defense. It is out to the 46-yard line from the 31 to the 46, a gain of 15 yards for Logan Howell. And a new set of downs here for the Hearts. So that helps. Bale will go back to the shotgun here. He's got Hal lined up beside him in this set. There's the snap. He's going to keep Bale to the near side. Still on his feet and gets it out Nathan close Bale to midfield. Call it the 48-yard line. From the 46 to the 48, a gain of two. going to make it second and eight. Effingham really overloaded that left side with blockers and maybe to the point of congestion where Vale really just didn't have anywhere to go before the Charleston defense swarmed him over after a short gain. 3.02 to play in the opening quarter. Charleston already leads it 20 to nothing. Hearts head to Salem next Friday night, and then it's homecoming here against Paris the following week. There's the handoff. Vale, or not a handoff. Vale's going to throw. He's got Vaughn, and he can't tuck it in. Got on his shoulder pad, didn't it, Dustin? And he got it, and he was going to gather it in. But a good job by Josh Casley. He never quit on the play, and he knocked it loose, and it falls incomplete. Yeah, once he saw the ball rattling around a little bit there in Vaughn's hands, he uh, came in and cleaned up and made sure that no one was going to hang on. That's probably a catch or a play that Caden wishes he had back because he was wide open there. So the play stops the clock with 2.45 to go in the first quarter. Brings up a third and eight on the incompletion. They'll go right back to that. Bail up under center. Looking to throw. Coming to the near side. Got some time. He throws it too hard and out of bounds. And that'll bring up fourth down. Incomplete. Hit as he threw it. Blumker, the intended receiver. Zach Blumker was the intended receiver here on the near side, but he didn't have a chance as Vale threw it away because he was under pursuit, shall we say. He had three different Trojans defenders all breathing down his neck, and it was all he could do just to get rid of that football downfield before he took a loss. So that'll bring up a fourth and eight, but potentially the Hearts are going to stick Charleston fairly deep here as they're kicking from their own 48. Line of scrimmage is the 48. Roberts, the deep back four. Low snap, but Miller has it, and he gets it away, and boy, it's straight up the shoot. Not much on this one. Now it gets an Effingham bounce. That helps, and it's going to end up inside the to the 15-yard line. Miller's been well, as it was 15, so that ended up being a 37-yard punt. A whole lot more than I thought when it went up. Yeah, I was kind of afraid with the trajectory of it that it might bounce back towards midfield when it landed. Instead, it took a really friendly bounce for the hearts and uh, probably another 10 or 15 yards of field position there. That uh, one of the few breaks we've gotten so far. You never know what's going to change the momentum here. So Charleston first and 10 at their 15. Sean Hussey up under center. Gives it to the deep back. That's Casley, and he doesn't get much. He might not have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Nice pursuit by the Hearts. Travis Durbin particularly got in there and helped. And Travis and Tyler Johnson, and no gain. Second and 10, still at the 15. Hearts clogged the middle of that line well that time. Levi Michael, who works at that middle linebacker spot, also in on that stop. That'll bring up a second and 10, no gain. Hussey ready. There's the snap. He rolls to the near side, throws out in the flats, caught by Noah Miller, and wrapped up nicely by Durbin for a very short gain. Travis Durbin is a busy lad here. Travis Durbin. So the pass is complete to the 18. So from the 15 to the 18, three yards, and now it's third and seven. So I like what I'm seeing from the Hearts D here. 
Noah Miller's a big boy too. It's not easy to wrap him up one on one like uh, like Durbin did. Uh, excellent uh, limiting of the play there and leaves the Trojans with a third and long. Charleston calls time. Minute 19 to play first quarter. Back in a minute. It's Charleston 20, Effingham nothing. You're on 97.9 XFM. All right, third and seven as the Hearts have put together two nice defensive stops here. Let's see what happens. A pitch to Casley going to the far side. Nice blocking. He's got the first down. He's stripping tacklers. He's he gone. may be gone. Somebody's got to cut him off. Nobody's gonna. Josh Casley, touchdown, Charleston. It's 26 nothing Trojans still with a minute three to go in the first quarter. Great blocking at the line of scrimmage. There is a flag at about the line of scrimmage. Let's see what that's about. Right about the line of scrimmage, and it's on the far side of the field, and it is on Charleston, and that one's going to come back. Against Charleston will indicate a nice run by Josh Casley. Well, Casley had good blocking, but apparently too good. And I wish I had a look to see the flag on the field before I wrote down that in my scorebook, uh, the 82, but... Uh, it's at, oh yeah, as far as the numbers. Flag's thrown at the 28. So that gave him seven. Now let's see what happens here after the hold. It'll go back 10 yards. And it'll be at about the 17-yard line. So a 10-yard walk-off. That leaves Charleston third and 17. So that's the situation. Great run by Casley. Called back because of the hold. And it's third and 17 now. Line brings up third and seven. And it should be third and 17 with a minute three to go. So the ball at F at the Charleston's 18-yard line here. Back to throw. Hussey going to the far side, gets it away, and it is caught or not. The official says it is complete. It is caught at the 30, and that's enough for a first down. That's a good job by Austin Cohn on that far sideline to keep his feet in bounds before, as he corralled the pass and then let his momentum carry him after he completed the catch. And he knew exactly where the first down marker was, too. So from the 18 Charles to the 30, gain a 12, just enough for a first down. I thought, sure, it was third and 17. What did I miss? I guess they gain, well, regardless, they get the first down. So a new set of downs here out across the... 30 yard, and they're at the 30 yard line. Coming to the near side, Noah Miller, he gets tripped up by Dirk Noah Levitt. But a decent Andy. gain on first down. 10, Dirk Levitt. They'll mark the football at the 36 yard line. From the 30 to the 36, a gain of six. And they'll make it second and four. I guess what uh, happened there, Greg, would be that Casley had a pretty big gain. The flag was actually thrown after a, about a 10 yard Correct. gain. Good thought. And, and he had made enough on the run before the flag was thrown that that's why yep. it was the seven. It was marked from the spot where the infraction occurred. They get six at second and four. This will be the last play of the first down. Josh Casley's loose, and he gets taken down by Cody Sennett at about midfield. Otherwise, he might have been gone. Cody Sennett might have saved a score there. That ends the first quarter. Casley it moves the football into Effingham territory at the Hearts 39. So a gain of 15 yards to Effingham's 49-yard line. We've played one quarter. Charleston 20, Effingham nothing. Home. Got aches and pains from those football games? Stop by Andy's Health Mart Pharmacy and see what we can do for you. Ask one of our pharmacists about the products that can get you back into game shape. Locally owned and conveniently located at 805 West Fayette. Andy's Health Mart Pharmacy, caring for you and about you. First and 10 at Effingham's 48-yard line. That's where they spotted it on that run. And here's how we start the second quarter. Josh Casley running up the middle. Still on his feet. Hearts thought they had him stop. They didn't. He cuts back, and he's gone. Touchdown, Charleston. Josh Casley came to the near side. The Hearts thought they had him wrapped up. They didn't have him wrapped up. He stayed on his feet, drove to the far side, took it in. Touchdown, Charleston. It's now 26 to nothing. A 48-yard touchdown run by Josh Casley. Nice little spin move there. I mean, that could have been limited to a six or seven-yard gain. He put a move on one Effingham defender and then just some quick cuts and a lot of athletic running. He was gone. 
And he's the little brother. Going to kick. Placement. Kicks up. Kick is good. 27-0 Charleston. Just into the second quarter here at opening night for the home season for the Arts Conference opener. It's 27-0 Charleston already. We're all up in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Nick Wilson ready to kick off here for Charleston from the 40. Gets a foot into it and sends it high and deep down the middle. Taking it about the five by the Hearts. They're going to come to the near side of the field. That's Logan Howell. Now he cuts it back toward the middle of the field. Still on his feet. Still on his feet. Out the 30, 35, 40 near the 45-yard line. Nice return by Logan Howell. He took that ball at the five, Dustin, and got the ball over the 40. Call it the 42, about a 37-yard kickoff return. Nice return by Logan Howe. Yeah, easily the uh, deepest kickoff the Millers uh, or Wilson's had today. But uh, great return gives the Hearts some good field position. Let's see if they can come up with an answer here. It's not too late. It's still just the second quarter. 11:47, second quarter, seven plays, 85 yards. Casley's 48-yard touchdown ran the kick good. It took 239, and the Hearts are down 27, nothing. And there's one incomplete. Nathan Vale threw it out in the flats. Second Zach Miller was having to turn around and could not turn around in time. And it's off his hands incomplete. And that'll bring up a second and ten. Clock stops with 11.30 to go in the second quarter. Charleston's well, pretty good, Greg. <laughs> they, are, they are pretty good. The consensus is they're pretty good. That's my expert analysis. Thank you. Hal in motion. He gets the handoff. Goes to the far side. Pretty good containment. Now Charleston gets him, and Nate dives forward anyway. Gets it out across the 45. Good work by Hal of making something out of nothing. They'll mark it at the 45. 42 to the 45 again. A three at second and seven. Next week, we go to Salem to play the Wildcats. Then it's homecoming as Perry comes to play us two weeks from tonight. Then we head to Mattoon. And then it's two home with Mount Zion and Muhammad Seymour. And that's it. Holy cow. We're already talking about the end of the season. Football goes fast, gang. Let's see what happens here for the Hearts on third and seven from their 45-yard line. Howell in motion. Bale's going to throw. Comes to the near side. Caught by Zach Blumker. If he gets the spot, it should be a first down. He got tackled by Casley as soon as he caught it. But it appears to be just enough for a Hearts first down. Complete to the Charleston 48. They may bring the chains out. And we're going to have an official's timeout for a measurement. So they will. So first time to give a shout out to the Arnold Company. The Arnold clan there over there being the chain gang for about uh, 84 years now here at Effingham. Not the same Arnold's, please let me tell you. Not the same Arnold's. I think once they come out and measure this, they're going to... Go ahead and signal the first down. Now they they're saying forget about it. They just wave the chains off. And said, hey, let's uh, let's let's go. They don't know that in their personal services contract that the Arnolds are guaranteed a certain amount of time on the field. Is that right? Yeah. That's all this. That's all that was about right there. I don't know much, but you know, you, you get these insights. Anyway, it's a first down from the 45 to Charleston's 48, gain a seven, and that's enough for a first down. So the Hearts new set it down, and they're in Charleston territory, so let's keep this thing going here. 10-10 to go in the second quarter. Hearts down 27-0. Vaughn in motion to the near side. Nice splits out to the far side. Pass is through the hands of Zach Miller, and thank you, Zach, for covering up, because that might have been Zach a live Miller, football. The receiver, it was incomplete. Clock Bring stops. They call it an incomplete pass. Stops the clock with 10 minutes to go in the second quarter. Charleston scored three times in the first quarter and got their fourth touchdown just into this second period. So the Hearts end up getting a yard out of the deal to the 47. I think the official sees that. The side judge says, wait a minute, there. Moved it back to the 48. I wasn't going to say anything. But it, they moved it to the 47. Seems easy enough on an incomplete pass. Just put the ball back where the... An incomplete pass on first down, no less. But, hey, what do I know about officiating? Bale up under center here. Looks to throw. Fell down. He goes down. Back in Effingham territory. You saw Nathan try to get some speed up. And his foot wouldn't hold. He slipped. 
and it got to the Effingham 49. So from Charleston's 48 to Effingham's 49, a three-yard loss, and it's third and 13. And number 35, Brandon Howry, a six-foot, 205 linebacker, was also on veil pretty quickly there too. He gets mentioned a lot. He's another talented kid. Charleston made it to the semifinals in high school football last year. Let's not overlook that. And they have most everybody back. Vail up under center. Third and a, hunt, a bunch. He's going to throw. He's got a man there. It is caught and dropped. Oh. Great defense, I think. Drew Levitt was the intended receiver. Drew caught it, and then he got hit a lick. Drew Levitt, the intended As Trustin Winnett said, hello, Drew, and welcome to high school football. That's another case of the receiver not quite getting a firm grip on the pass, you know, being open, but not quite hauling it in, and then just getting cleaned up by the defender before he has a chance to kind of double clutch and, and haul it in. You're right. That's a couple of passes the Hearts have had their hands on and haven't been, in, haven't been able to tuck them in. So it's fourth and 13, and the Hearts will kick it. And let's see what Zach Miller can do with this punt. Good snap there by Mr. Tun, and a whistle on the line of scrimmage. And somebody might have lined up in the neutral zone or somebody might have flinched. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Or it could have been that. So now it's fourth and 18. Falls back to the Hearts, 44. And they'll kick it away. That stops the clock with 9.09 to go in the second quarter. So let's see what Zach Miller can do now, five yards back. When it's back deep, and so's Casley. I don't want either one of those guys to have a chance to return it. Miller puts a foot in it down the middle. On the hop, it's taken by Casley at the 30. Lost his footing, gets it back, and a short return. Thankfully, he couldn't get his Casley footing. Caden Vaughn in on the stop, and Nathan Vale in on Vaughn. the stop. It is uh, back to the 30, and he returned it to the 33, so just a three-yard punt they return. In the half. And it'll be first and 10 for first Charleston at their 33-yard line. 27-0 Trojans, 8.59 to go, second quarter. Home opener, conference opener for Effingham. Charleston, mighty good football team. Sean Hussey up under center on first down. There's the snap, looking to throw, fakes. Now he's in trouble, scrambling, comes to the near side. He's trying to make something out of nothing, and he does. He finally gets wrapped up by Bill Arndt after he gets it out across the 35. And Bill can wrap you up. But he got it out across the 35, call it the 37-yard line. From the 33 to the 37, again, a four will be second and six. We've seen Hussey do a lot of scrambling tonight, but that's the first time he's actually tucked it in and uh, run it himself, and he managed to get a, a decent little gain out of it. Got the homecoming court for Effingham today. There are some footballers in the court. I'll talk about that as I get the opportunity. Hussey up under center on second and six, going deep. He's got a man there, and he overthrew Winnett. And that'll bring up third and six. When it was running free down the left sideline, if that pass is on the money, there's nobody that's going to catch him. Fortunately for the Hearts, uh, throw led him probably a good five yards too far, and we're going to be looking at a third and six for the Trojans now. Yeah, absolutely. That Nobody was going to catch that, but Hattie, it was see you later. Absolutely. So third and six, ball still at Charleston's 37-yard line. 8-11 to go, second quarter. Charleston leads at 27 to nothing already. Hussey back to the shotgun here on third and six with, with the ball carriers on either side. Now he's in trouble. The hearts are back there. Levi Michael had him and lost him. There's the pass. It goes out of bounds incomplete, and that'll bring up fourth down. I'll well, tell it, you. it wasn't a sack, but it was sure a hurry. It was a hurry, but... Uh a great job by Hussey uh, to, to even get rid of the football. I mean, that's the difference between, you know, the ball being at their own 37 and being back uh, behind the back behind the 30-yard line. So heads-up play by the quarterback. We'll see. Uh, the Trojans will probably kick it away for the first time here. And their punter is not available. That's Ethan Miller, who's a safety on defense for this Charleston team. So Nick Wilson will be the punter. He's also the kicker, so let's Zach see if that has any impact here. So, line of scrimmage, the 37. High snap. He gets it away, though. Nice recovery. High. Hits the 30. 25. 
near the 20 before Charleston tags it out. Treston Winnett got down there and tagged it out for Charleston at the 23. Wow, not a bad punt at all. That's a 40-yard punt there. Isn't that something? Because it looked like for every possibility that it was going to get blocked or he wasn't going to get it away at all. And instead, 40-yard punt. Had to reach up with one hand just to kind of knock it down, tipped it down to himself and got the kick away just in time. Uh, for the second play in a row, the Trojans averted disaster and, and actually are better for it. So the Hearts will get it first and 10 at their 23-yard line. 27-0 Charleston, 7.52 to go. Second quarter, Hearts trying to get their first win of the year here in their first home game of the year. Logan Howell in motion from the near side. There's the handoff. Good blocking on the left side. He's still on his feet. First down out across the 35-yard line. Logan Howell on the carry. Nice work. From the 23, he advances it to the 36, a 13-yard gain. Tackled by Aaron Decker. And it's first and 10. Logan's had some pretty nice carries this evening. Uh, it's a first and ten hearts. I mean, Effingham's done some good things in the running game. It's just that a couple of uh, couple of fumbles at the end of plays have been costly. But they've, they've run the ball all right. First and ten at their own 36. Vail back to the shotgun. They bring Miller in motion, and down he goes. Charleston was expecting at that time. Zach Miller got the handoff. He immediately got taken down. Nice work there defensively for Charleston by number 30, Ryan Preston. Cut his legs out from under him just about the time he got the handoff. It's a loss back to the 30. So from the 36 back to the 30, a six-yard loss for the Hearts on that play, and that'll bring up a second and 16. Well, you keep playing, and you keep hoping for good things to happen. Second and 16 now. Hearts appear to be playing the, making a change on the play. They bring Hal in motion from the far side, and they're going to throw Vail across the middle, and it is incomplete. The intended receiver. The pass was incomplete. Hmm. The intended receiver for the Hearts was Dylan Wolf, and it went past him and two Charleston defenders. It falls incomplete. Stops the clock with 6.39 left in the second quarter. Brings up a third and 16. Yeah, Charleston's Tristan Winnett, who we've already mentioned a few times tonight, had the, probably the best chance at catching that, and it kind of went through his hands, uh, fortunately for Effingham. But now third and a very long 16 coming up. Hearts with the ball at their 30-yard line. Let's see what Nathan Vale can pull out of his bag of tricks here on third and plenty. Logan Hall again in motion from the near side. Vale across the middle. He's got a man there. Caden Vaughn, great catch. First down, Effingham. What a grab by Caden Vaughn. Woo. That's so tough because he knew he was going to get blown up whenever he hauled that in. I mean, he was amongst probably four Charleston defenders. Great concentration, held on to that pass over the middle. Effingham moves the chains. He looked that in, and that was a pretty one, and we're bringing it back because there's another flag. That was such a nice catch by Caden Vaughn. That's two great plays for Caden that have been brought back by holding penalties. And that's that's a half dozen flags against the Hearts here in the first half. It's just uh, the story for Effingham that will not go away this season. So it's back to the 17-yard line. So there was a three-yard loss, and then they move it back 10 to the 17. So it's third and 29. And Howell's going to carry, and Logan tries to string it out. He's still on his feet, looking for help, and he's back near the 10-yard line by the time he finally goes down. And that's going to bring up fourth down and a pretty good chunk of real estate. Boy, that was such a fine catch by Caden Thorne. For Charleston was Golly. All right, the football is spotted at the 14-yard line. So from the 17 to the 14, a loss of three for Hal. And the Hearts are going to have to punt it from here to tomorrow here. Josh Casley along with... See whether Zach Miller's got a little bit of stick of dynamite in his toe here. Hearts need to get it out of here. There's the snap, a good one. There's the punt. Good punt. Near midfield, hits outside the 40, and now it comes back. Charleston's way. The ball takes a Charleston and it ends up inside, inside the, the 35, line. inside the 40, pardon me. And it'll be first and 10 for the Trojans, and they're going to have really good field position here. It'll be first and 10 at the Hearts, 
37. So from the 14 to the 37, it ends up being just a 23-yard punt. Well, I thought the potential was for that to be a nice punt. Yeah, it's just how it breaks sometimes because he's he kicked that ball better than he has any today as far as punts go, and yet least net yardage uh, out of four tries. So 5.33 to go before halftime. Charleston with the ball in great field position at the Hearts 37. Hand off up the middle. There's Josh Casley. He's loose. Somebody better tackle him, and somebody does. On the carry. Bill Art again. He's, got a first down for He's had a uh, busy last quarter or so. And uh, Matt Woolman also in on that stop for the Hearts. So from the 37 to the 16, are they saying? Looking at the side, Judge, 17-yard line. So, uh, last play was by Matt Wolven. Keenan, 19 there. At the FEM, 17, first and 10. And Hussey up under center on first and 10. Gives it to the deep back. That's Casley. Down he goes. Not much there that time. Casley nice stop as Levi eight. Michael stayed Levi home. Good tackle. Michael. Good tackle. And a gain. <clears throat> or maybe not. Maybe no gain. I think that was right about the line of scrimmage where he got stuck by Michael. So second and 10. 4.48 to go before halftime. Already 27-0 Charleston. Hussey up under center. There's Casley again. He driving and a driving and moves to the right side of center and gets a little. Arts there again. Durbin's in there. And ha! haven't had a chance to talk about young Mr. Salcedo yet. But uh, he's on that stop as well for Effingham. Andy Salcedo getting in on that stop for the Hearts. I can't, it, I can't imagine that uh, Casley's had two straight plays for no gain from the 12. so far this season. So Effingham can hang their head on that. Well, actually, a gain of five from the 17 to the 12. So it's third and five. I don't really know what I was talking about then. Going to throw. Hussey knocked down incomplete. Good work over there as who was that that got a hand on it for Effingham. Nice work over there. Let me get my secondary man. There's Art again. He knocked that pass down. Stops the clock with four minutes left. Brings up a fourth and five. Ball still at Effingham's 12-yard line. Wonder if they've got a field goal in their bag of tricks. I think they're going to talk about it. Timeout, Charleston. It wouldn't be a bad time for them to work on it, honestly, with a 27-point lead. I mean, you're not it's not an unnecessary risk by any means. So four minutes to go, second quarter. Let's take a 30-second break, Brian. 27-0 Charleston. Friday night football here on 97 9 Got aches and pains from those football games? Stop by Andy's Health Mart Pharmacy and see what we can do for you. Ask one of our pharmacists about the products that can get you back into game shape. Locally owned and conveniently located at 805 West Fayette. Andy's Health Mart Pharmacy, caring for you and about you. WXCF, Effingham. Shout out to our officials. I know everybody listens, and moms of officials have told me through the years they like it. I know I've had officials in basketball tell me their moms listen, and they love it when we talk about their sons. Ad Owen is the referee. Buck Barnes is the umpire. Mark Thomas, the head linesman. Dave Purvis is the line judge, and Tony Rick is the back judge, and they are going to try the field goal. Placed on the 20, it'll be a 30-yard attempt as Nick Wilson. There's the placement. The kick is up. It's plenty long, and it is good. The kick is good. 30-yard field goal. Jesse. Nick Wilson, and it's now a 30 to nothing. Charleston lead. 3.55 to go, second quarter. Back with the kickoff here in a minute on 97.9 XFM. All righty. Four plays, 25 yards, highlighted by the 30-yard field goal by Nick Wilson. Minute 36 on the drive. It comes with 3.55 to go before halftime. Charleston's extended the lead to 30 to nothing, and a nice return here by the Hearts as they get it out close to the 40-yard line. Zach Miller got run out of bounds out across the 35 as uh, the tackling on special teams is just as crisp as on the, as on the offense or the defense out to the 38-yard line. That's where the Hearts will set up shop on this drive. 22-yard return for Zach Miller there. So first and ten, isn't it nice to be able to see and hear? And this is the best. I mean, these are the best facilities we'll see all season. There's no doubt about it. So thanks to everybody who worked really hard on this a few years back. 
you know who you are. I sure appreciate it. Charleston jumps. No whistle. They must have stayed onside. Logan Howell had the ball, tried to turn it up, and his feet went out from under him in a short gain on first down. From the 38 to the 39, a gain of one for Howell, and that'll make it second and nine. Logan Howell on the carry. Had a little bit of rain this morning. I don't know if that was enough to make the field a little bit slick this evening or not. We've seen a couple of kids miss, have a tough time making guts or get their footing. You're right. Hart's line it up. Veil up under center. Vaughn behind him in the backfield. They bring in motion. Miller, they run it up the gut. There's Caden Vaughn, and he's close to a first Caden down. Vaughn up the middle. He's up Caden the Vaughn line. and his blockers trying to get something going offensively. By Ryan Roberts. Out across the 45 to the 47-yard line. So from the 39 to the 47, a gain of eight. And that'll make a third and a long one. Good second effort there to get himself a little closer to the sticks, make this uh, third down play that much more manageable. Caden's worked all his life to be ready to play varsity football when his opportunity came, and he's going to make the most of it. Charleston getting ready to blitz again. Up the middle, Vaughn got loose. Caden going to the far side. Win it, only man to catch him, and he did, but he gets close to the 20-yard line. First down, Effingham. Had not it been for, for Tristan Winnett, Caden Vaughn would have taken it to the house. And Charleston was in the backfield quickly, but they were keying on the other back and uh, let uh, Vaughn slide right by. And next thing you know, he's he's in the secondary. First and 10. Three and 28 is 31. 31 yard gallop for Caden Vaughn. And the Arts have it first and 10 at Charleston's 22. 2-2-2 two, two, two to go before halftime. Boy, you'd love to get some points on the board before you go to the locker room here. Bail up under center on first and 10. Howell in motion, gonna throw, got a man, it's caught out there, get away, Drew Levitt inside the 10, first down and goal to go for the Hearts. Drew Levitt on the reception. Drew Levitt, nice catch, got open on the flats, boy was he open, and he grabbed it, tucked it in, turned it up, first and goal Effingham. Yeah, shook off the tackler there, nice athletic play to get himself some extra yardage at the catch. From the 22 to the 6, Dustin, a 16-yard gain. And the Hearts have it first and goal to go at the 6 of Charleston. Still two minutes to go before halftime. Got Levitt out far to the wide side. Got a man in motion. That's Hal. He's got the ball. He comes to the near side. That's Zach Miller. He turns it up. He's in. Touchdown, Effingham. Zach Miller gets the Hearts on the board with a minute 45 to go in the second quarter. And the fireworks, courtesy of the football moms for the first time this season. Remaining in the opening half. Six-yard touchdown run. Nice run by Zach Miller, the sophomore. Takes it in from six yards out, and it's a 30-6 game. And again, it comes with a minute 45 to go before intermission. And the Hearts will try the conversion here. And they line up in the unbalanced line. And they may go out of this. I don't see the T. Now there's the T. So we are going to kick. And they do shift to the traditional set. Miller back to kick after he had a chance to catch his breath. From Vale's hold and placement. Ton to snap. There it is. The kick's up and the kick is good. 30 to 7. Hearts on the scoreboard. Minute 45 to go in the second quarter. Back with a kickoff in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Some of the guys out there along the line Andy Salcedo, Trent Barnhart. You've got Brandon Loy out there, Scott Dink. You also have Wyatt Cayley, uh, Travis Durbin, Matt Woltman. Of course, you've got uh, Dustin Levitt out there to kick. Levitt kicked that time, and he hits it in the middle. And the ball falls at about the 20-yard line. Casley picks it up, and he heads up the middle, and then he heads down to the ground as he did a little dozy doe there. Travis Durbin in there, and also Brandon Loy. So they team up Casley on the tackle. On He's tackled by Caden Vaughn. Nice job. And they stop it in the middle. And Caden Vaughn got his nose in there, too, on that tackle. 
And it's out across the 30 to the 31 yard line and that's where Charleston will set up first and 10 with a minute 39 to go before half. And now you've scored, Dustin. Now you've got to make sure they don't get anything. Yeah, you just get a stop here going to halftime feeling good about yourselves. How's he going to throw? To the far side, caught. And he goes down, courtesy of Dirk Levitt. Cone caught it. Dirk Levitt on the stop. Out across the 35 to the 37, from the 31 to the 37, a gain of six at second and four. Charleston's used one timeout, so two remaining here in this first half. Hussey goes to the shotgun. Going to throw. Comes to the near side. It's caught. And down goes Josh Casley. He lost his footing. Levi Michael tagged him out. Out across the 40. To the 41, Dustin. From the 31 to the 41. And it is enough for a first down. They needed 10. They got 10. And the new set of downs for the Trojans. And we're just outside a minute to go here before halftime. Just over a minute. Hussey back to throw again. Going to the far side through the middle, and I don't know who wasn't looking. I think maybe somebody for Charleston got lost his footing or got caught up in transition, but uh, Brandon Howry was the intended receiver, and he got held up somewhere in the middle, and the pass by Hussey went by him incomplete, and it stops the clock with exactly a minute to go before halftime, and it's second and ten. So the Trojans come into this uh, drive looking to throw the ball. It's almost like they want to get that answer before the break. Even though they've got the big lead, they want to go ahead and knock the hearts down a peg. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what Brian Halsey would like to do. Hussey back to throw to the far side. It is caught. Yes, it's caught. First down for the Trojans into Hart's territory. Cone made the catch to the Hart's 47 from Charleston's 41 to Effingham's 47, a gain of 12. And the new set of downs and 53 seconds left. Cone is a nice-looking receiver. He really does well to go down and get those low throws. Hussey looking to come to the near side now across the middle, and it's incomplete. Hart said Cody sent it out there. He might have had the best look at it. Josh Casley was the intended receiver for the Trojans, but Senate had the best shot at it. It falls incomplete, stops the clock with 43 seconds left. It will be second and, and it's second and 10. 30 to 7, Charleston. The Hart's finally dented the scoreboard. They'd love to keep the Trojans from getting a little point on the board here before halftime. Casley. Uh, one of many receivers out there right now. Hussey from the shotgun. across the middle. Incomplete. As it was not able to be gathered in, Tristan Winnett was, was the intended Tristan receiver. Winnett. And it came up empty. And that brings receiver. up a third and ten. Stops the clock with 39 seconds to go. Winnett tried to haul that one in one-handed just to kind of knock it down. Charleston had three wide receivers out to the left. But uh, Winnett was lined up right and came across the middle. And that was the target for uh, Hussey, who had who has uh, thrown six straight times here on this possession. They've got two more shots. It's third and ten at the Hearts 47. Hussey crossed the middle, going deep. Got a man there, incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. Win it again. And Woltman back there again. Woltman and Dirk Levitt team up there. I'll tell you what, some good minutes out there tonight in this early going for Matt Woltman. So he and Dirk Levitt team up there. And that'll bring up a fourth and ten. 33 seconds left. Now, if you're Charleston, what do you do? Well, you can, I mean, you're in Effingham territory. There's only 30, 33 seconds left. So you could run a play. The only risk is a turnover. And that's exactly what the Hearts have to be looking for. In a slick field. Hussey from the shotgun. Casley lined up beside him. Hussey rolls to the near side, wants to throw. There's the pass, and it is incomplete, and it's Hart's football. Hart's had Austin Cone there for Charleston, and good work by the Hearts, and lots of pats on the helmet there defensively for Effingham is Marcus Robinson. Nice job defensively for the Hearts. The junior breaks it up, and it's Hart's football. Boy, so you score, then you get a stop, and you still got 28 seconds. My guess is they'll take a knee, but I don't know. Well, I've seen the Hearts do a few things through the years. It's 53 yards to your own goal. I mean, we saw we saw Caden Vaughn break off a 31-yard play his last time last possession, so it's not outside the realm of possibility for FGM to get on the board again here. So let's see what's up. 
28 seconds left. The Hearts have also used a timeout. They have two left. Two left for the Hearts. 28 seconds left before halftime. Bale from the shotgun at the Hearts' own 47. Man in motion. Hey, they're giving it to Dylan Wolf. He throws, and it's intercepted and then dropped. Dylan Wolf, quarterbacks for Effingham at the lower levels, or has, and uh, they threw it out on the corner, and he tried it, and it almost was picked off, but Charleston was not able to gather it in. The incomplete pass stops the clock with 22 seconds left and brings up a second and 10. Thank That's you. the other reason why you don't try something like that. <laughs> Yeah, but it would have been cool if they had completed it. Oh, I know it would have been. <laughs> Let's see what happens here on second and ten. Logan Howell in motion. We're going to throw again. Bale coming to the near side. He's got Zach Blumker there, and it's picked off and dropped again. Uh, Josh Casley had that on both hands, but not both hands at the same time. It falls incomplete. Blumker was the intended receiver, but he never touched it. Casley certainly did, though. That ball had a lot of air underneath it, and Casley doesn't appear to be the kind of athlete that you want to throw a jump ball toward because uh, I think he's going to win that battle most of the time. So now it's third and 10, 16 seconds left. Ball still at the Hearts' 47-yard uh, line. Well, let's get it this time. Bale stays in the shotgun. Man in motion, coming to the near side, Zach Miller. Vale's going to keep, and he drives and gets near midfield. Vail and that'll bring up fourth down. And that also will be the last play of the half. So the Hearts, safety first there. They figure if they get one busted loose, so much the better. As it is, that runs down the clock, and that brings us to the end of the first half. Time expires in the first half. And I should tell you that he got two yards. Because we strive for excellence in our statistics. At the half, home opener, conference opener for the Effingham Hearts. It's Charleston 30, Effingham 7. When it comes to vehicles that get over 30 miles per gallon, we have a lineup the competition just can't touch. At Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, South Route 45 in Effingham. Shop 24-7 online at danheck.com. Go Hearts. <laughs> Excuse me, I've been fighting a cold and I think I'm losing the battle, but Mom, I'm warm. Don't worry. 30-7, to seven, Charleston in front here. Hearts did play much better that second half of the second quarter. First, they got a stop, which was really good. Then they scored, and then they got a stop. Charleston had pretty good field position there right before halftime, right. and they shut them down. Charleston's going to get the football first here in the second half, so that you could set a little bit of a tone if you could come up with a stop, you know. Put together a, a nice little scoring drive. You know, it's we've seen plenty of uh, we've seen plenty of crazier things happen in high school sports, and you just got to give yourself a chance. That's the name of the game. The, you know, I don't think or believe that the Hearts are going to pack it in or anything like that. They're going to come out and play hard, and you know, good things happen whenever you go out there and hustle. So we'll just have to see what happens. Without a doubt. Lots going on this weekend. We told you that there are many things going on tonight. Saturday activities are plenteous. If you like baseball, and who among us doesn't? St. Anthony, Aldemont, Dietrich, South Central, and Putnam County, or not. Putnam County, I think, is going to come to that. They're in the North Clay Showcase tomorrow. So if you like baseball, you ought to just head to Louisville tomorrow. That's always been a well-run event. And I, I remember the first year they had it, I went and covered... I think it was all five games they had that day. I just sat there and watched ball games. I remember uh, old Duck Nosvich was out there, and we sat together and watched all the games. And that's that's fun when you can get uh, get all those teams together, see a lot of area teams, and all in one place. Putnam County then is going to play Stu Straws tomorrow night. That's a seven o'clock game. And Ramsey's a Windsor for baseball cross country. The only invitationals tomorrow morning: Effingham, Aldemont, Newton, North Clay, and Tatopolis all competing there. And T Town and Effingham were just in a triangular this week, and T-Town won it, and Effingham was second. They were like 10 points apiece, so 10 points apart, so that should be a lot of fun. And St. Anthony's up in the Tuscola Classic for cross country. Boys golf, the Paris Invitationals tomorrow morning, Effingham and Newton, and St. Anthony, Aldemont, Totopolis, and Shelbyville are at the Windsor Invitational. They'll play that at Angus tomorrow. Girls golf, T-Town's at Windsor to boot. And there's soccer, St. Anthony at Christ Rock Lutheran down in uh, Centralia. 
and Bloomington Central Catholics at T-Town. Those bars start at 11. Tennis, Effingham's at the Glenwood Titan Invitational. St. Anthony's at Alney and Cumberland. Newton and T-Town are at the Casey Westfield Bevels Tournament. And there's volleyball. Effingham's already playing the night at Mount Pulaski. They're there all day tomorrow. Newton and T-Town are at the St. Anthony Tournament. Beecher City, Brownstown and South Central at the Vandalia Tournament. And Dietrich and St. Elmo at the Flora Tournament. And yes, Virginia, there's JFL tomorrow. Effingham at Taylorville. 10, two, 10 noon, 2 and 4 tomorrow's schedule. Charleston gets the football back at about the five-yard line. Josh Casley is running in several directions. That's Tristan Winnett, isn't it? Tristan Winnett returned that football inside the goal line, and he takes it out across the 25 to the 28-yard line. Yeah, Winnett let that thing roll all the way basically to the goal line, maybe just shy of it, but then still managed to turn in a pretty solid return. Scott Dink on the stop, and it'll be first and 10. For the Hearts, excuse me, for the Trojans at their 28-yard line. So it's 30-7 to Charleston. Hearts did score the last points in the half. Let's see what happens. The officials are saying let's get a ball, which is a good way to play football. So a young man from the Charleston sidelines who looks like he's ready for soccer runs the football out there, and he's probably thrilled. Man, I bet that's a big moment for him. He got it out there in good shape. All right, here we go. First and ten. Hand off. Casley up the middle. Somebody tackle him, please. Finally, nice diving tackle. Dustin Casley Levitt came out of here. nowhere to make that tackle. As it is, Casley took that from the tackle 28. Is that correct? Yes. To the 45, a gain of 17 yards. Trojans pick up the first down. Nice work by Dustin Levin, man. He came flying out of the backfield to make that stop. Yeah, great hit, but unfortunately on the tail end of a, another nice run for Mr. Casley, who's up to 145 yards on 10 carries. This is how we start the second half. Hussey up under center for Charleston on first and 10. Hand off up the gut. That's Noah Miller. And Noah Miller carried that time. 41, Andy Salcedo. And he gets it into Effingham territory to the 49. Six-yard gain to the Effingham 49. Senor Andy Salcedo on the stop. First touch since the first quarter for Miller in the Charleston offense. And his brother Carlos also plays football, except he's not because he had major surgery earlier this year and can't play. But uh, he's always out here. Hussey, there's the snap. They give it to the deep back, and they're trying some other people now. It gets to the Effingham 45. That time Ryan Roberts carries the football. So getting a look at a couple of other people here for Charleston. Orion Roberts, 5'10", 195-pound senior. From the 49 to the 45, a gain of four. That'll make it third and one. Orion had a fumble recovery defensively for Trojans in the first half. Now he's getting a chance to carry the football a little bit. 30-7 to seven Charleston. It was 27 to nothing, so the Hearts have put a dent in it a little here. Hearts looking for their first win of the season, fourth game of the season. Let's see what happens here. Sean Hussey can play some football. Up under center on third and three at the Hearts 45. Pitch play. Casley goes wide, now cuts it up the middle. Good run. He gets it inside the 35 before he finally goes yeah, down. On the carry, picks up the first down. Gets the first down for certain. And let's see who comes out of there for the Hearts. They've had some changes on the line this week. Stop Blaine Custer. Blaine Custer. Custer. Blaine Custer makes the stop for Effingham. But from the 45 to the 35, a gain of 10, and that's a first down. So Charleston's moving again. 9.55 to go third quarter. Hussey up under center, and the new set of downs here with 9.49 to go in the third quarter. There's the snap. And off to the deep back. And that is Orion. And the ball get loose, or did he get loose? Roberts, on the carry. Roberts I guess, just got swarmed under. He might not have got back to the line of scrimmage. Levi Michael in there. And Bill Arndt, always had a good night. Gets it close to the 35, call it the 36. So a loss when that all gets sorted out. Nice pursuit there by Michael and Arndt. Loss of one at second and 11. So back to the 36 of Effingham. 9-10 to go, third quarter. Next week we go to Salem. More conference action. Going to hand off to the deep back. That's Casley. He's loose. He's still on his feet, and he gets near the 25-yard line before he finally goes yeah, down. Cody Sennett came up from behind line. and made the stop. 
but it should be enough for a first down. Ball right on the 25-yard line from the 36 to the 25, a gain of 11. And... Ball spotted at the 25, bring up... Okay, they say we're still short about a yard. So, got nine, still needs a short one. So third and a short one here. Ball at the Hearts 25. Now he'll go up under center on third and very short. My guess is they'll just block for him. He's going to throw. Goes to the sidelines. It is up for grabs, and it is intercepted. Marcus Robinson picks it off for the Hearts. Right in the corner, just outside the end zone, or was it in the end zone? It is in the end zone. It's a touchback, and the Hearts will get it first and 10 at their 20. Marcus Robinson, the junior, nice job. Boy, he went right up with a Charleston receiver, and he got it. I called it like I did because they both went up for grabs, and you couldn't tell for certain who had made the get the catch. Marcus Robinson with a I, pick. I will freely admit that I didn't think that uh, Robinson came down with it. I thought that Charleston had scored a touchdown there, but uh, hey, that's the that's the stop you needed. Even though the Trojans drove a little bit, they didn't score. Now it's time for an answer. Try and make a game of this thing. So first and ten for the Hearts at their twenty, within thirty to seven here. A lot of time. Bail up under center. They try to give it up the gut. They go on the sweep, rather. They fooled me. Is that Logan Howell? Gets out across the 25. It's Zach Miller on the carry. 32 and... Th no, it's Logan Howell. Well, he and Howell were both over there. So one was blocking. So we'll give it... We'll give it to Miller. Miller from the 20 to the 27. Gain of seven will be second and three. Bale stays up under center here on second and three. Man in motion. Hand off up the gut. And not much. Not much that time. Sent Miller and Howell in motion. Gave it up the gut to Caden Maughan. And maybe no game. Nope, got a one. Got one to the 28. So it's third and a long three. Third and a long three here for the Hearts. Close to their 28-yard line. Miller in motion this time. And up the gut, Caden Vaughn driving and diving, and he has a first down. Out across the 30. Nice work by Caden Vaughn. Came to the near side. Good job by the Hearts of giving him some help out there. Let's give a shout-out to Tim Hillen, who's in there on the O-line right now. And the ball is to the 33 from the 28 to the 33. A gain of five, and that's enough for first and ten. So the Hearts with a new set of downs here, and they're out to their 33-yard line. Bale stays up under center. Miller in motion. Handoff up the middle. Caden Vaughn, no, the ball. Is the ball loose? Or I guess Vaughn just up the gut. I thought they said the ball came loose. Well, and, and the, the sounds you heard from the Effingham side of the field kind of led you to believe that maybe, and the ball did come loose, but apparently Caden held on, so recovered his own fumble and managed to gain a five in the process. Yeah, ends up being a five-yard gain for Vaughn to the 38, and it's second and five. You can always kind of hear the air rush out of uh, the yeah. home fans whenever the ball comes loose. So a gain of five, as it turns out, to the 38, and they throw... And it's caught, and it's a first down. Nice work by Drew Levitt, hanging on out to the 45-yard line. Drew Levitt on the reception. Good catch. Tried to turn it up. Charleston wouldn't let him get away to the 45. Gain a 7 to the 45. So the hearts are grinding it out here, Dustin. Stringing a drive together. I mean, it's it's what we said they needed to do. Hope they can keep it up here. Marcus Robinson got the pick, and now the Hearts are moving it down the field. It's 30 to seven, but you have to start someplace. It was already 27 to nothing. Underneath, back to throw, Vail to the near side. It is caught, and what a job of hanging on to that football by Drew Levitt to the 48. Holy cow! He got hit a lick. Good clean hit. But, boy, he got hammered, and it is complete to the 48. So from the 44 to the 48, a gain of four, and that's second and six. When it comes to vehicles that get over 30 miles per gallon, we have a lineup the competition just can't touch. At Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, South Route 45 in Effingham. 
Shop 24-7 online at danheck.com. Go Hearts. Just giving them different things to look at here. Five and a half to go, third quarter. Hearts just grinding it out here. Nathan Vale stayed up under center on this drive. Hal in motion, coming to the near side, gets away, turns it up, gets it into Charleston territory. Made something out of not a whole lot. Logan Hal got it across midfield into Charleston territory. Gain of three from Effingham's 48 to the Charleston 49. A gain of three. And that will make it third and about five. Ball spotted just inside. 30 to 7 Charleston. But the Hearts are driving here in this third quarter of football. Vale again up under center. Miller in motion. Miller doesn't get it. They run it up the gut instead. And close to the first down marker. Caden Vaughn has it. And he's near the 46, which will be about a yard shy of a first down. 49 to the 46, a gain of three for Caden. And it's third, fourth, and one. I'm pretty sure the Hearts will go for this. So fourth and one, and it's less than one. Fourth and a yard from the Hearts are going to go 46. for it, and I would too. Heck, you're owing three, and this would get a first down here. This could be huge. So let's give it a go. And they are. Fourth and less than a yard. From the shotgun now, Vale. There's the snap. They give it to Howell, and he's stuffed. And Charleston holds, and the Howell Trojans the will get the football. We went to the down. shotgun there, and, uh, and we'll take over on downs with three had less than a yard to go, and it didn't work out. So Charleston gets the football at uh, their 48. So from the 47 to the 48, there was a loss of one on that play. Charleston with a new set of downs at their 48-yard line. 3.57 to go in the third quarter. Well, that's disappointing. Now it's back on the defense. See what they can do. Hussey up under center for Charleston here on first and 10. Hand off to the deep back. Casley bounced off one defender. Still driving. Still moving. Gets it inside the 45. Gets it near a first down. Heck of a run by Josh Casley. My goodness. He didn't know he was supposed to quit. He is a tremendous football player, Greg, and it's just scary that he's apparently they're not their first option when everybody's healthy, kind of like last week with Centralia. He's back next year, too, to the 43 of Effingham, so a nine-yard gain, second and one. 30-7 to seven Charleston, 3.20 to go, third quarter. Next week we go to Salem, 7 o'clock kickoff, right here where you're listening or watching if you're watching it on the web later. Driving it up the middle, enough for the first down. There's Noah Miller. Miller picking up the first down for Charles. And he drives it to the middle. Travis Durbin and Levi Michael and all those guys that hang out there in the middle on the stop. It was made by Taylor Clare. Taylor Clare also in on defense. Taylor, a dandy offensive player, in on defensive line. Charles to the 38 from the 43 to the 38, a gain of five there. And a first down. Hussey up under center. With a new set of downs and up the gut, Noah Miller, quick opener. And he hits the seam real well and gets it near the 30. <laughs> Salcedo makes the stop, so Andy uh, has had a lot of time tonight and is making the most of it. To the 31, from the 38 to the 31, a gain of seven. And it's second and three. Two and a half to go in the third second quarter. Four Trojans at the Effingham 32. Hussey, second and three, gives it. Casley, deep back. Hart stopping before he gets the first down. He gets it inside the 30, Casley though. The and a lot of people in there. Yeah, Cole Moran's Levi in there. Levi Michael on the stop to the 29. From the 31 to the 29, a gain of two, so it's still not a first down. Third and one for the Trojans. It'll be third and one from At the, the Hearts 29. Yeah, awfully close. And they've got two plays probably to gain this one yard. Hussey up under center. Gives it to the deep back. Casley and down he goes. No, he doesn't. And he makes it for the first down. They had him stopped again, or so they thought. He just kept driving, and he gets the first down. He does a lot of work Ryan after Roberts the initial contact. And my apology, it wasn't 
it wasn't Casley. My apologies, that was uh, Orion Roberts that carried that time. Well, then in that case, Orion Roberts does a lot of work after initial contact. 29 to the 26, a gain of three for Roberts, and it is enough for Charleston first down. They've got it first and 10 at the Hearts 26. And off to the deep back, that's Roberts again. He's still on his feet, and he gets near the 10-yard line before they finally take him down, and another Charleston first down. So Brian Halsey with several folks in his stable of weapons. And they'll place the football at the 12-yard line. From the 26 to the 12, Dustin, a gain of 14 yards. Travis Durbin, old number 21 in on the stop there. So first and 10 for the Trojans at the Hearts 12, so they can get a first down without a touchdown. They give it away, Roberts, and he dies, and he gets decked after a couple of yards. Hmm. Roberts again. Bill Arndt gets the stop to the 10, gain of two. Third and eight. Or excuse me, second and eight. Ball at the Hearts 10-yard line. Now we're under a minute to go in this third quarter. We've only had about, what, two or three possessions in this third quarter? This is the third possession. They've both had the ball one time, and it's that second possession for Charleston. 40 seconds to go in this third quarter. Hussey silences the crowd. There's a whistle, and we might actually have a penalty on Charleston. Let's see. I'm not saying that others should have been called. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, second I'm not saying others should have been called. I'm just saying they haven't had many to get called for. No, they've played a clean game. And Effingham, is, uh, Effingham doesn't have any in the second half. Of course, that's just, uh, as we just mentioned, there haven't been a lot of possessions. But uh, still, it's been a problem area. So any progress is good progress. Dead ball foul from the line of scrimmage from the 10 back to the 15 on the five yard walk off and Charleston will get one more playoff here before the end of the third quarter Hussey to the deep back Roberts he's driving he dives and he is in for the touchdown inside the five pardon me inside the five yard line and that's the end of the third quarter. Let's get the spot. From the 15, they'll score it at the four-yard line, a gain of 11. And it'll be first and goal to go for Charleston when we start the fourth quarter. On the way in a minute, it's Charleston 30, Effingham 7. Making someone's day a little brighter or making them smile is as easy as a phone call to KM Floral Shop or visit them online at knmfloralshop.com. K&M is a proud sponsor of Hearts Football. Go Hearts! And the luckiest man in the world, Larry Wilson, won the 50-50 drawing. He won it twice last year, Good didn't he? Good grief. I think something fishy's going on there. No wonder he's a millionaire. Way to go, Larry. He can always buy me a pizza if he wants. All right. 30-7. to seven. Charleston in front, and they're driving. And a couple of things worth noting. We had told you earlier that uh, Carlos Salcedo had surgery. He's unavailable. Jordan Tun, the heart center, has dealt with a lot of problems with his knee all season long. And he's on the sidelines on crutches now. So we'll see what's up with that. Roberts has it for Charleston. He was stopped at the line of scrimmage and then dove forward. Got it inside the five. It'll be, and that was, uh, I had said because of the penalty just before that last play their last play did not give them a first down this does give them a first down though from the four to the one a gain of four excuse me from the four to the one a gain of three and that is now goal to go so first and goal for charleston at the arts one as we start this fourth quarter hussey up under center and they jump clearly at least two charleston players jumped Dead ball, false start, on the offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. That helps, so that'll push it back from the one to the six. So anyway, Jordan Tun, he's been dealing with a with a balky knee all year. Still looking for a and for the he's on the sidelines on crutches. That's not good news, so we'll have to check and see who it is that's centering right now for the hearts. Meanwhile, 
at the six now, goal to go. They give it up the gut, Charleston does, and he drives up the middle, and he's in for a touchdown. Ryan Roberts, who did most of the ball carrying this time for Charleston this series, takes it in from six yards out, and that extends the lead to 36-7. to seven. Score comes with 11.21 to go in the fourth quarter. Well, we had no scoring in the third period, but Charleston gets the job done here and extends their lead with a six-yard touchdown run by Orion Roberts. Now we'll see about the conversion. And it's up, and it is either good or no good. Did they ever indicate? <laughs> It must have, good. Good. It, must have been good. Must have been good. All right, so it's 37 to 7. Bale was talking with, well, I, I mentioned that he was talking with Todd Winnie, the yeah, physician, the, and uh, you also mentioned that well, Mr. Stevenson was warming up. Uh, Kevin Doherty. We Kevin saw Doherty. Kevin Doherty. Seemed like he was getting loose in a hurry, kind of like when you see a pitcher in the bullpen in baseball get up and start throwing in earnest. It was almost like someone said, hey, you need to be ready. So we'll see. He's the one of their quarterbacks at the lower level, and... Maybe or maybe not, he gets uh, some varsity action here tonight. All right, so here comes the kickoff from the 40. High and down the middle. And it is finally gathered in outside the 10. And the Hearts have a good return going. They may have this one open near the 45-yard line before they finally take him down. Logan Howe took that ball in around the 10, I think. Yep. To the 45-yard line. 35-yard kickoff return. And the Hearts again with pretty good field position to start this drive. 44, they're going to call it. 44-yard line. It's kickoff returns of 35, 37, and 34 yards for Logan Howell tonight. He has done a good job of getting the Hearts some uh, good opening field position. I do see a flag out on the field. I don't... Yep. On red. 10-yard penalty from the flag, first down. Lock in the back on the hearts. Flag's thrown at about the 26. So that's going to push it back to about the 16-yard line. Nathan Bale is out there for the hearts, a quarterback. I'm trying to find out who's going to center. Jordan Tunn is on the sidelines. So make that a 16-yard return for Howell instead. That's all he gets credit for. It's either, it's either Cole Moran or Carter Hayes. I can't tell if it's 88 or 68 centering now for Effingham. Hal in motion. They run it up the middle. And not much. And the whistle's finally blown dead. Caden Vaughn got the ball. He didn't want to quit. Charleston didn't want to quit. And the officials didn't blow it until he was clearly stopped. And all that was for pretty much naught. But he kept no going as hard as he could. No gain. It'll be 17. second and 10. Hearts with a football up there. 17-yard line. Charleston in front, 37-7. to 10.40 to go in this one. Man in motion for the Hearts. That's Zach Miller coming to the near side. Nice block. Gets out across the 30 and out of bounds. Boy, credit where credit's due. Who was sealing that off out there? Logan Howell. Nice block, and he held it well. That set up Zach Miller for a good gain on that play to the 31-yard line. So from the 17 to the 31, a 14-yard gain and a new set of downs for the Hearts. What nice block out there by Hal. Vail up under center on first and 10. Looking to throw to the far side. Levitt's there. Can he get it? Yes, he can get it. You bet to midfield. Drew Levitt looked over one shoulder, then he looked over the other shoulder, and he made the grab. That's a heck of a catch to just shy of midfield. So from the 31 to the 49, a gain of 18, and another first down. Drew Levitt, we've mentioned it before, but never played football before, and he's done a great job as a receiver for this team. His twin brother Dirk's doing a good job defensively for the Hearts. Man in motion. They run it up the middle, and still on his feet. Caden Vaughn, I think, yep. Caden gets it into Charleston territory to the 49. 
So from our 49 to their 49, a gain of two, and it's second and eight. You know, the Levitts, they came from Beecher City. They moved in a couple years ago. Us uh, NTC boys, we always dream about what it'd be like to get to actually play football, and they uh, actually get a chance to live it out. That's good for them. Bale on second and eight gives it to Zach Miller. Hold that block. They can't. He gets it a little bit farther downfield. Dives near the 45-yard line to the 46, they'll call it. So from the 49 to the 46, a three-yard gain for Miller. And that'll make third and five. So Zach Miller from the 49 to the 46, and it's third and five. 9-10 to go in this one. Charleston in front, 37-7. to Drew Levitt comes down here to the near side. Bale changing the play at the line of scrimmage. And there's the snap, and they give it to the up back, and that's Vaughn, and nothing. Nothing there. It's Cole Moran that's playing center for the Hearts now. So he's the one that's trying to keep things as it were. Maybe a half a yard, just shy of the 45-yard line. Maybe a half a yard there for Vaughn. That'll bring up a fourth and five, and the Hearts being in Charleston Hearts territory, they'll go for it here. Trojan 46. So they're going to bring in the big boy backfield. Levi Michael checks in. Dustin Levitt checks in. So let's see what happens here. And they're not going to get it set in time, and they have to burn a timeout. Carter Hayes was supposed to be in there, and... He didn't get in there quite on time, so it was a timeout for Effingham. It comes with 8.10 to go. Charleston in front of the Hearts, 37-7. Back in a minute here on 97.9 XFM. Making someone's day a little brighter or making them smile is as easy as a phone call to KM Floral Shop or visit them online at knmfloralshop.com. KM is a proud sponsor of Hearts Football. Go Hearts! They have the perfect gift for the home cooker pro chef. John Boos has proudly been serving their customers for 125 years. John Boos and Company, where it's a block party all year long. Well, the Hearts tried the reverse that worked so successfully a couple of times at Centralia last week, but this time it didn't work as Centralia stayed home. Again, they hand it off, and then the man receiving the handoff gives it to the second back, and this time it was Caden Vaughn again, as it is usually the second man, and Caden tried to turn it up, and it's over to the 44-yard line. So a gain of about a yard and a half, and that was fourth down. So Charleston gets the ball on downs here with eight minutes left. And Larry Wilson wanted me to clear it up. Uh, he did not win twice last year. He won, and then the following week, his daughter-in-law, Ann, won. So, so he says there is, n there is no foul play afoot in the 50-50 drawing. So that makes him feel better because it was his family that won twice instead of him individually? You'll have to take that up with him, but that was that's what he told me. All right. 44-yard line, that's where this drive starts, and Charleston's after it, and Noah Miller gets it back Noah into Effingham Gary. territory on first down. He's a good game. Marcus Robinson, Cody Sinek came up and made the stop to Effingham's 47-yard line. So from Effingham's, excuse me, from Charleston's 44 to Effingham's 47, gain of nine. So that'll be second and one. Seven and a half to go in this one. We'll talk with Coach Mack on the post-game show. Brought your way by Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota. Hussey to the deep back. And he is still on his feet. He has the first down. He's inside the 45-yard line. That's Orion Roberts. Boy, he's been busy in the second half. He's kind of taken over for Casley. Yeah, give uh, Charleston some credit. You know, uh, they had Josh Casley running up some big numbers, but they have given some other guys a chance to carry the football, recognizing the situation here that they've got a probably got a victory secured and doing the right thing and getting some other guys involved. Gain of two. Gain of two to the 43, and that's enough for a first down. You know, Greg, we've talked so much about how good Charleston is. It seems like we've kind of glossed over the fact that this is such a huge rivalry game between these two schools. Huge. They start looking when this is before the season starts. Run up the middle. That's Miller again. He's inside the Hearts 40. Miller up the middle. To the 30... Seven from the 43 to the 37, a gain of six. 
brings up a second and four. Travis Durbin on the tackle for Effingham. I know that uh, my protégés at the Effingham Daily News, Sam Rickleman and Millie Lang, Effingham High School graduates, always took great pleasure when the Hearts picked up a win against the Trojans during the football season or any other sport. Spring to give them a spring in their step, didn't it? Up the gut. There's Miller again. First down and then some. He gets it inside the 25-yard line. Nice run there. Cody sent it a little slow getting up. But he's up. And Dustin Levitt checking the parts, but he's good to go. Very physical ball game. We knew it would be. Ball at the 23 from the 37 to the 23. Dustin, a 14-yard gallop, and that's a new first down. 6-10 to go in this one. Hussey up under center on first down. They give it to Miller again. He just running rough shot right now. We got pole axe there at the end of the play. I think that's Cody Sennett who came up to say hello. But Matt Woolman got him first. I think Dirk Levitt was in there too. <laughs> A cast of thousands inside the 15. They'll mark it at the 11. Make it the 12, pardon me. From the 23 to the 12, a gain of 11. And another first down. And 5.50 to go. Uh, see on first and 10, up the gut, there's Noah Miller again, and this time the Hearts do not let him pass. Miller again on the And Hearts have a new man out there on that stop. Peyton Bushu got the stop. He's been busy on the JV. And he got the stop Peyton there Bushu for the Hearts. Andy Salcedo made the tackle for to the out. 10, gain of two, second and eight. As we're just pretty much keeping it on the ground here and letting the old yard, clock grind out. Yep, that's... Uh, the only thing Charleston needs to do, get the game over without getting anybody hurt at this point. Hussey, pitch. Roberts comes to the middle. Hearts stuff it. Nice work there. Good Roberts pursuit the by pitch. the Hearts. As uh, another stop by, stop by Salcedo. Salcedo. Boy, Andy's been busy tonight. It is inside the 10 to the 8. So from the 10 to the 8, a gain of 2. Pick up of a couple and it's down to 445 to go. Third and seven. Just deciding the final score at this point. Third and 7, they can get to the 1 without a, a touchdown. And they can get a first down without a touchdown. Miller driving inside the 5. Off the left tackle. And there's Zach Miller in on defense, making a stop for the Hearts. And... Who else we got? Woltman again. Talked about a man a lot tonight. Matt and Matt Woltman on the tackle for FEM. To the four. So from the eight to the four, a gain of four. And that's fourth and three. They can get to the one for a first down. Or take it to the house for a touchdown. Down to four minutes to go. Goal. So they're going to try the field goal again. So. We, yeah, we talked about this, you know. When you're winning big, why not uh, run your field goal kicker out there and give it a couple tries? You never know when you might need this trick in your bag later on in the season. From the 11, 21-yard field goal attempt. He's got plenty of leg, and it's good. 21-yard field goal, and that extends the lead for Charleston to 40-7 to with 3.43 left in this one. Back with a kickoff in a minute on 97.9 XFM. All right, it was a nine-play, 52-yard drive. Took 4.17 off the clock, highlighted by Nick Wilson's 21-yard field goal. Came with 3.43 to go. Charleston extends their lead to 40-7, to and here's the kickoff. Let's see what the Hearts can do with this. It's taken inside the 10. Logan Howell going to the far side of the field, and there's a flag, and he gets it out near the 20. Let's see what the flag's about. Comes with 337 left in this one. Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota post game show on the way. Ryan will have 4,000 scores. Dustin will have 4,000 stats. I'll give you a little work on the scoring. And we'll talk with Coach Mack. It's all coming up on the post game show. Holding on the return. Half distance to the run. First down. So from the 19. Half the distance, which would be about nine and a half yards. So that should put it somewhere right around the 10 or the nine. And there you are. 
Because I'm a bit of a slacker, I'm just going to go ahead and write that down as a 10-yard <laughs> penalty on my stat sheet. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, again, Pardon me. First and 10 at the 9-yard line. Nothing I won't get over, I hope. All right, first and 10 from the Hearts 9. There's a pass play out here in the flats caught. And then after the run, Zach Miller, or after the catch, Zach Miller tries to turn it up. Gets it out near the 15-yard line. I said Miller. It's yeah, Howell. Already now in a quarterback grab game. Completes a long... pass to Logan Howell. Howell caught that ball. Pardon me. And Kevin Doherty threw the pass. And another flag. Flag thrown right at the 10-yard line. So forget that pass play. Because this is going to be against us. Here the block in the back. Half the distance from the flag. First down. You like it the way the officials wait to say the thing until I'm done talking? It's it's just like you guys are on the same page. It's it's uncanny. Yeah, at least. So half the distance back to the five. From the five. So it's first and a whole bunch from the five. Hart's looking to get out of trouble. Kevin Doherty at the helm here running the offense for the Hearts. Good athlete. Baseball, basketballs. Uh, football, of course. Here's a throw. He got hit as he threw it, and it's intercepted. Trustin Winnett has the pick, and he gets close, and is he in? Yes, in for the touchdown. Charleston, well, Winnett on the interception. When Kevin the threw the ball, he got hit. He got hit just about the time he let it go. We put it up anyway, and it was underthrown a little as a result. Trustin Winnett with the pick, and he runs it in for the score, and that makes it 46-7. to it's a 25-yard return on that interception for Winnett. So that comes with 2.58 to go. And if, if they make the extra point, it's a 40-point game, and that'll mean continuous clock. So it'll be a really quick 2.58. Indeedy. Which Wilson will try the extra point here. There's a placement. There's the kick. It's up. It is no good. So we'll play some more. 46 to 7. Good. Wide left. Yeah, I suppose he missed it on purpose. I, <laughs> I'll bet I, I hate to speculate, Greg. Thank you. <laughs> I <sh> <laughs> oh, well. Northside Ford and Effingham is proud to be a sponsor of high school sports. Stop by and see all the new and exciting 2013 Fords in stock now at Northside Ford or visit them online at EffinghamFord.com. Let's see what happens here with Nick Wilson's kickoff. With 2.58 to go, hearts down 46-7. See if they can get a little something going here at the end of the show here. Kickoff, <clears throat> high and end over end to the middle of the field. It is caught on the fly by Logan Howell. Got a good run going up the middle and out across the 30-yard line before they How take him down. Return? He's had a good night returning the football. He has. Uh, he's had a couple of really good returns that uh, kind of got cut down because of uh, because of penalties. But, uh, yeah, every time he's touched the football in the kick return game, he's, he's done a good job of at least doing his part to get Effingham some really uh, nice starting field position. And there he does it again, a 20-yard return out to the 30. 97.9 XFM, WXEF and Effingham. Wrapping up Friday night football, the home opener and the conference opener for the Hearts. That Cardinal Dodger game getting ready to get underway. So we'll keep you up to date on that. From the 21, Kevin Doherty back at quarterback. And Kevin's going to keep. And down he goes. Might have got a yard or two. Might have got a yard or two. Let's see how that Doherty shapes up. To the 33. Tackle by Ryan Preston. In a two. Make it second and eight. Two and a half to go in this one. Hearts will go to 0-4. Charleston will be 3-1, and, and the Hearts will be 0-1 in the conference. And boy, you can't hardly afford a conference loss when you only have six teams in the conference. Logan Howell to the far side, looking for a place to turn it up. Finally does, but he ran out of bounds. Howell on the carrier runs out of bounds. Might have got a couple of yards, close to the 35-yard line. Yeah, gain a 2 to the 35, ran out of bounds. That'll stop the clock with 2.12 to go. And bring up a third and five. Almost five, five. Almost six. Next week we go to Salem. Seven o'clock kickoff. Salem's had a tough start this year too, so could be an interesting one next Friday night. Sound like they were in a 
heck of a game with Paris. A close game anyway. Doherty from the shotgun. Kevin coming to the near side. There's the pass, and it was behind Hal off his hand. It fell incomplete. Stops clock with 2.09 to go, and that'll bring up a fourth and five. One thing I'm noticing about Doherty is that he seems to have uh, plenty of arm strength to spare. He puts pretty good zip on the ball. Maybe a little, a tad bit on the inaccurate side on that throw, but you got to figure he's uh, he's probably a little keyed up and nervous back there. This is, as far as I know, his first varsity action, and and uh, that's <laughs> that's not to that's not to be glossed over. I mean, that's a big moment for a young man. You bet. Just a sophomore. Vaughn in motion to the middle of the field. Now comes out to the far side. Here's a throw to the middle, and it's incomplete. Pass to the middle falls incomplete, and that stops the clock on fourth down. Charleston's ball on downs with 2.05 to go. So it'll be first and 10 for Charleston at Effingham's 35-yard line. 2.05 left. 46-7. to seven. Again, Charleston be 3-1, and 1-0 and in the conference. Hearts will be 0-4, 0-1 in the conference. We'll see what happens next week. Charleston's put 40 or more points on the board every week so far this season. Just a real potent offense. Even the game they lost, they scored 41 points. Hussey's going to stay in there. No, he's not. There is a new lad out there quarterbacking for Charleston. That's Dallas Wilson, a sophomore. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. So five-yard walk-off. That'll run it back from the 35 to the 40. Clock stops with 2.03 to go. Dallas Wilson, a sophomore, out there quarterback now for Charleston. And that quarterback now for Charleston is number seven, Dallas Wilson. 46 to 7, Charleston. Wilson up under center on first and 15. There's the snap, handoff, and just a whole lot of <laughs> scrumming in the middle of the field. That's a pretty good word for it. Looked like a little bit of a rugby match breaking out there at the 40 yard line. Hurts are trying to peel their way out of there. And give it a yard to the 39. And the ball carrier. Hmm. There's a whole new crew out there. Brandon was, Warfall was the ball carrier on the last play. Okay, Warfall carried. Gain of yard makes a second. A one yard to the 39. 39. So second and nine. And a minute 28 to go. Miller up, or Wilson up under center. There's the pitch to the deep back. Down he goes. Might have got back to the line of scrimmage. Ball carrier that time was... Lewis Turner. Tackle by. Lewis Turner goes Zach down. Miller. Zach Miller's in on defense now. This last couple of series is special, and he gets the stop. So Turner goes from the 39 to the 37, a gain of two. And that'll make it third and 12. Charleston with the ball at the Hearts 37 yard line. Should have two more plays in this one. There's the snap, handoff to the deep back. One more penalty for the road. <laughs> Down goes the ball carrier. Zach Clough on the carry. Zach Clough. On the play. It's not just the players who should play it till the final whistle, Greg. The officials should not mail it in. If they see a penalty, they should go ahead and call that thing. Don't want to see somebody getting hurt, right? Don't want to see me get home any earlier. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> don't, don't make me laugh because then I cough. Ah. Illegal formation on the offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Yeah, the hearts say forget that. We're not going to take that penalty. So no gain. So it's fourth down and 12. Charleston with the ball at the hearts 37. And this could be the last play of the game. There's the handoff. And the ball's loose. And the hearts cover it up. Hearts recover that fumble, and credit where credit due, there's Mr. Brandon Loy coming up with that ball. Oh, number 50 recovers that fumble. Brandon Loy recovers the fumble, and the ball's at the Hearts 41-yard line. So uh, loss of four on the play, Dustin. And then the Hearts get the ball first and 10 at their 41. So Brandon Loy recovers the fumble, and the Hearts 
with 27 and a half seconds left. Might get a couple of plays run here. Doherty back out for the Hearts. Post game show on the way. Brought your way as always by Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota. Doherty in the shotgun. There's the snap. Handoff. That's Howell. He gets it comfortably into Charleston territory to the 45-yard line. Nice run. And a first down for Effingham. From the 41 of Effingham to the 45 of Charleston, a 14-yard gallop. And that's a new set of downs for the Hearts into Charleston territory with 21 seconds left. Just figuring the final score here. There's the snap. Doherty's going to keep, drives inside the 40, and that should be the last play. To the Charleston 39, gain a six. Be the last for Kevin Doherty, and that's score, the show. Final score, Charleston 46, Effingham 7. Again, Charleston got out in front early and were never headed. Hearts 0-4, 0-1 in the conference. Charleston now 3-1, 1-0 in the Apollo. Post-game show on the way in a minute here on 97.9 XFM. North Side Ford in Effingham is proud to be a sponsor of high school sports. Stop by and see all the new and exciting 2013 Fords in stock now at North Side Ford or visit them online at EffinghamFord.com. So before I get any further, it looks like we got a couple players up for some interviews, so I'm going to turn my headsets over and let uh, Greg do a little interview on. Very good. We had talked with Coach about having some of the seniors come up and visit with us, so thanks to Coach and the guys for agreeing to do that. Uh, always rather talk after a win than a loss, but not the case tonight. But Taylor, you guys played hard, Taylor Clare. Yeah, we did. I guess I need to turn that up, then they'll be able to hear you. <laughs> so, uh... They got they got up on you early. That was tough. Yeah, but, I mean, I appreciate the offensive line and everybody. They kept fighting and stuff. So we just got to keep that up. And, and it appeared at one point there after they got the early scores that the Hearts were able to stop them, got a score of their own, stopped them again before the half, and we had some momentum generated. Right. That, that was nice to have that momentum. Mm -hmm. So I got to ask... Um, what is it keeps you going? What What is you you like best about football? Well, it uh, keeps me going. It's just it's my senior year. You got to go all out every time, and I just love. I just we just got to get that first win. That's what's going to make it make me have fun out there. Is getting that win. So you've been busy on both sides of the line this year too. Yeah, it's pretty tiring, but I mean, luckily we got other guys who can get in there and. Give me a break too. So, you're one of the captains. What does that mean to you? Why is that important? Uh, it's something I've always wanted to happen since my freshman year, and I just like that I'm able to be a good example for the, my teammates and stuff, and show them how we're supposed to act and stuff. And good to have a leader. <laughs> yeah. Good to have a leader. So next week you head to Salem. Uh, they've had a rough go here in the early going. So who knows what might happen. Right, that's the game we always want to win. We just want to go crush them now. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt. And uh, got to start a winning streak sometime. Might as well be next week. Right, definitely. <laughs> exactly so. Taylor, thanks for the visit. We appreciate it. Thank you. Arts Taylor Clare, we appreciate him coming up for a visit. And Logan Howell's here, too. And we'll let him get saddled up here, and we'll visit with another one of the Hearts seniors. Logan, uh, busy night for you tonight. Uh had yeah. a good night running the ball, and also nice job returning tonight. Uh, thanks. Um, just had good blocks, kick return, and offensive line was doing good, too, playing with Charleston's line. Mm -hmm. This uh, old rivalry, everybody knows that, that's been around Hearts football for a while. Yeah. And anytime Effingham and Charleston play, there's a lot on the line. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, just everyone worked really hard. And, mm -hmm. and Charleston's always one of our big rivals. We always want to try to play with them. And, get the win and just didn't happen tonight yeah so uh but we're starting to see some things that that are going well um and the effort is always there yeah everyone's given 100 percent um it's receivers the um the line just defense all everyone it's all around everyone's giving it all okay so one loss in the conference and that's the all 
the only one we can possibly afford, and who knows, may get a five-run win streak here yeah, at the end of the year. Down. We're getting it this week. There you go. Logan, thank you. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. You bet. Hearts Logan Hal. Appreciate him coming up for the post-game visit here. Glad to get a chance to visit with a couple of the Hearts seniors. And Coach McDonald, nice enough to come up for the post-game visit. And... Uh, We've done this a lot of times through the years, Mike, and not too often when it's 0-4. And uh, I don't like it. No. And I, I don't think you do either. No, uh, it's that's not fun. Um, you know, and we were close the last couple of weeks, and uh, I said all along this is probably the best team we're going to face on our schedule. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, they, they're going to compare with, uh, with Breeze. Uh, they, they're probably bigger up front. Uh, you know, and they're even playing without uh, Dylan Casley right now. So, um, you know, they're, they're they're pretty good. And I thought, you know, we did we did a lot of nice things, and our kids played hard tonight. And I, you know, I got no complaints about how we played. Uh, we just continued to make uh, mistakes at the wrong times. Uh, you know, they take the opening kickoff, and and uh, or we took the kickoff, and and. Mm -hmm. and did nothing with it first series, and they went down and scored, and then we get to the next series and and uh, fumble the ball, and uh, in the series after that, you know, we make a mistake on a uh, penalty, I think, on a kickoff, and we get backed up, and then we fumble the ball again. And you just can't do that with good teams, and, and uh, you know, I don't know what the, the, the problem was with, with the handoffs, uh, but it's it's mistakes you can't make, and you put our defense in, in a bad situation, and, and then... Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're still struggling a little bit with our interior defense to stop and run. And, and uh, you know, when this team wants to run the football, they're, they can be, be pretty good at it, too. You know, uh, the Miller kid and the, and the Kazzy kid, you know, Miller's going to pound it at you. And then Kazzy's, I mean, I don't know how many times. There's sometimes they don't even block linebackers, and he just cuts, you know. I think sometimes... And it's a lot of our younger guys. You know, we had Zach Miller in there and Travis Durbin and even our, 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 our older linebackers. They, they go flying to the football, which you want them to do, but, you know, you got to stay under control because uh, the Cassie boy, he, he, you know, jump cuts and just watches people go by. And, and uh, that probably happened, you know, six, eight times where we had a guy right there and, and uh, you know, we didn't get broke down and, and get a get an arm on him and, uh, you know, and once he gets out into some open space, he's, he's pretty tough and to bring down. And so, um, you know, those things hurt us. And uh, uh, early in the game, I thought, you know, we had some things trying to get outside with our, our little short passes, but we, we couldn't, you know, make, make connections on those. And those are things that, you know, those little passes are passes we, we have to make, you know. It's like making a handoff. You know, we work on those things continuously through the week, and and it's very disappointing when uh, you know we throw one out there, and we got blocking out there, and we got the edge out there, and and we can't complete that little pass. And you know, it's it's just as frustrating as when we fumble the football in, inside. And uh, you know, sometimes you look out there and you don't think we work on anything. You know, but um, you know those kind of mistakes you just can't make against the Charleston this year, and they're plenty experienced and they're plenty talented and and uh, I'd be surprised if they lost another game this year. And you figure with the rivalry that these two have, if one has the chance to get up on the other, they're going to make the most of it. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and that's on the other thing, you know. We, we stop a couple times and they got you know, probably uh, one of the best kickers around, you know. And that mm -hmm. kid's making them from, you know, 40, 45 yards in, in, in practice. And, you know, he nailed, what, three of them today? And uh, you know, you, you give credit to our defense for making some stops, and and you know we're not used to seeing guys that can can uh, you know put three points on the board, and you know you, know, you do that three times, that's nine points, and you know instead of get coming out with zero. Yep. So <coughs> second quarter, I'm sorry, I'm dealing with a cold. Second quarter, they uh, they got ahead, but we got a stop. We got the ball. We scored. We stopped them before halftime. You actually had a little momentum heading into the locker room. Yeah, we did. We felt pretty good about what had happened. And like I said, if you take uh, a couple of turnovers off the board and, and them scoring right after that, it, it might be one score difference instead of, you know, 30 to 7. And um, But then, you know, we came out the second half, and we could never put a drive again together. Mm -hmm. And, uh, again, a couple of penalties here and there and a couple of missed blocks here and there and some passes. And, and uh you know, I, I think that we just, one of the things we physically got wore down, uh, that's just one of the things we're going to fight against bigger t t teams mm -hmm. like that is is them uh, being phys more physical than us. And, 
there's not much we can do about that at this point in time, but we just got to keep working and, and getting better and, and uh, make sure that our position is better and, and that, you know, we can't make the, the penalties and make sure you're just in position to do things better. So um, I told the kids, says, uh, you know, we got Salem next week. It's another conference game. Um, we always play well against Salem, whether it's there or here. And, uh, you know, we're just going to come out working our butts off this week and, and, uh, that's all we can do. We can just keep working hard and trying to get better. Exactly right. Mike, thank you for the visit and all the best. Hope it's a good week of practice. Okay, thank you. Very good. Arch coach Mike McDonald, the end final score here today. Effingham and Charleston. Charleston gets the win 46-7. to